once you have your florals prepped on your board for cutting, so this is half inch MDF covered in painter's tape, I use spray adhesive, stuck my pattern on top, and then I cut it out with my jigsaw so that it's a manageable size on my scroll saw. I'm simply going to take a ballpoint pen and I'm going to draw on the lines where I plan to cut. This is really where you can put your own artistic and creative spin on it to figure out exactly how you want to do this. When I draw the cut lines on my florals, I try to keep them as simple as possible. However, they are quite detailed since it is a detailed image. I try to plan it out so that I'm never cutting in with pilot holes that I can start at one end and cut all the way across to the other. To show you for reference, these are, these are the same florals. This one doesn't have my cut lines put on, and this one you can see where I've drawn them on just with a ballpoint pen. This is going to show me where I've planned to cut them, and it will truly make it one of a kind because I do this by hand. Um, this one I'll try, try to plan it basically the same, but realistically they're going to be different since it's handmade, and I believe that's what makes them beautiful. Once you have your cut lines drawn on, you can drill your pilot hole into your work where you'd like to get started. And then I'm simply going to go through and cut each piece out piece by piece. You'll see that a lot of people number them. I find it very confusing to number them because it's not in a linear shape. So what I do is always have a scrap piece of wood next to me so that I can put each puzzle piece down as I cut it out. So I'm about to get started cutting here. You can see I have my spare scrap piece board here that I'm going to put all of the pieces on as I cut them out. And just to note, I am using a number five modified geometry blade by Pegas. So a modified geometry blade combines the technology of a skip tooth blade and a reverse tooth blade. A skip tooth blade simply means that there's more space between the teeth, which makes it a faster cutting blade and it's less likely to heat up and snap. The reverse tooth blade means that there are teeth pointing down and pointing up, meaning that it's cutting from both sides, allowing it to be a smoother and a cleaner cut. I chose the number five blade because the kerf or the trace of that blade is slightly bigger than a lower numbered blade, but not too big. Because I'm going to be cutting each piece and then painting it and gluing it back together, I want that trace or the amount of material that's being taken away by the blade to be a little bit bigger so that the glue and the paint won't prevent it from going back together. If I used a smaller blade, like a number three or a number two, because the trace is so small, if the glue and the paint is thick in any way, it's gonna be really hard to glue those pieces back together, which is why I like to stick with a number five. All right, so let's go ahead and get started cutting. So I'm on the DeWalt scroll saw. I typically, when I'm doing outside cuts like this, am around a seven or an eight speed, and my tension is at a two and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So you're simply going to start wherever you choose in your pattern and cut it out piece by piece. When I'm cutting flowers, I start with an outside piece and work my way in. Because you're cutting it out systematically, you shouldn't require any pilot holes in order to get each of the puzzle pieces out. This makes the cut actually quite simple. From this vantage point, you can see that as I cut the pieces, I assemble them in a puzzle next to me so that I never lose a piece. This system has never failed me, but if you feel like it, you could number them. Now that I have the flower completely cut out and it's on my scrap board, I'm going to keep it assembled like this through sanding, through painting on this board the entire time. That's how I keep all of my pieces together. The numbers, they always just end up confusing me. So that's just what works best for me. So now that it's cut out, we'll move on to shaping. Flower, I took off all of the um, pattern that was stuck to the top and I've kept it in order. So as I mentioned when I was doing the cutting portion, a lot of people will number them. For me, um, since I remove my pattern and I try to keep it together as a puzzle while I'm cutting, I don't bother numbering them um, because I always try to keep it intact like this. So what I have here are a variety of sanding tools that I'm planning to use. As I mentioned, I have this rotary tool. You can get sanding discs like this. It comes in different grits. It's really great for shaping edges. 
Another attachment that you can get for the rotary tool is this sanding round. Um, it's a little bit more aggressive than the discs I find, so it is also really great for shaping. These here are carving bits that can also go into the rotary tool. Um, I'll show these a little bit later on if you're going to be adding any detailing into the leaves or you wanted to add carved details, say, into the center portion. Carving bits are a really great tool to have since they also work with the rotary tool. And as I mentioned, I have my sanding sponges. So I have a 220, a 120, and an 80 grit sponge. I typically will use these after I've shaped with my rotary tool because the rotary tool is aggressive. It can be a little bit wavy or bumpy. Um, so this is just used at the end to sand it out. So when you're looking at your floral, you can see right now there's no shaping done. It's fairly flat. So what you can do um, is decide how you want to shape your flower. So typically when I'm looking at a flower, the center is usually lower and the petals will build out and then kind of fall, fall to the outside. I'm going to show you the gluing technique to give it dimension once we've done the sanding and the painting. But in order to get that look, you kind of have to, to figure out where you want your shaping to be. So when I'm looking at this, I know the center spot, I'm probably just gonna give a little sand around the edge um, because that's going to be glued into the center and then I might do some carved um, details in the middle. So I'll sand just the outsides there. So then as I work my way out, I know I'm gonna wanna sand a little bit on the edge to give that look of the petal folding in and then round the outside to give it a really nice smooth look. A lot of this is personal preference, um, how you want your flower to look. So realistically, there isn't a how-to step-by-step exactly how you do it. It's really a lot of your personal preference. So I'll just show you quickly um, in real time how I shape a couple of the petals and then I'll go into a time lapse so you can see um, exactly what I do. So I just pulled out a petal here. That one is going to be connected to the center. I'm going to go ahead. I have my rotary tool powered um, with my foot pedal here. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. So you can see it's spinning there. I'm going to take it to the inside edge and just really take off a bit and sand it down because I want that dimension in my flower. I'm going to go along the outside edges here, clean up any sharp parts because flowers we know are very smooth. So you can see this tool is really, really fast. I'm just touching the edge. If I held it too long, I would take way more material than I wanted off. So again, you're just gonna wanna go slow. And you can see, as I mentioned, it's very dusty. So you do wanna make sure you're wearing your PPE. Okay, so now that I have that one petal shaped, I'm gonna put it in here and you can see the difference next to the petals there. So you can really see how this is now fully shaped and I'm gonna go around and do all of them and then I'll go over it with my sanding blocks. I'll probably actually just use the 220 to give it a nice smooth finish and then we'll get into the glue up. The rotary tool allows you to shape each of the petal edges quickly and efficiently. However, this could also be done by hand if you prefer to do so. Using an orbital sander would be quite tricky since the pieces are small, so I do find it handy to use the rotary tool in this case. This is also part of the process where you can use your own creative flair to do the shaping to your preference. So this is now a fully shaped floral using the rotary tool only. As I said, you can see along the edges because the rotary tool is um, more aggressive than doing it fully by hand, you can see some of it isn't very smooth. So what I'm simply going to do is take my little micro zip with the 220 grit sandpaper and I'm going to go around the edges by hand to smooth that out. So now you can see I've taken that rough edge off to make it perfectly smooth. I'm going to go around the whole thing with the micro zip doing the same thing to smooth it out and then it will be ready for gluing. 
Using the micro zip to smooth out the edges will give the florals a more consistent and clean look. It is important to have a smooth surface when you are planning to paint your item. Using the micro zip will also remove any of the fuzzies left over from the sanding process on the MDF, so this is a very important step. So now that I have the floral shaped how I like it, um, I'm going to move the leaves to the side because I'm going to paint those separately. But before I paint the flower, I'm actually going to glue it up. You do have the choice here. Um, if you prefer to paint each petal separately and then glue later, that's totally a personal preference. For me, um, I actually like to glue it together first and then I'll prime the entire thing as one and then paint it as one too to keep the colors really consistent um, with the floral that I'm doing. So as I mentioned, um, you can add a little bit of dimension when you're gluing, but this is also optional. I mean, the flower does look really beautiful as it is right now, so you could just glue it together flat and then it would glue flat directly to the backer, in this case, a growth chart. For me, I like to add a slight amount of dimension and how I do that is by gluing it just a little bit elevated when I'm putting it together. So in order to do that, I am going to separate it, although keeping it together as much as possible. And what you'll see is I'm trying to keep the pieces that are touching the middle point. So there, you can see that there. So I want that middle point to be the lowest point. So what I'm going to do is just pull it out and you'll see that. So that goes together perfectly there. I am going to take a little bit of super glue, put it on the petal, and I am going to fit the puzzle piece back in, but I'm going to glue it slightly, like just millimeters lower to give it just that little bit of dimension. So while I'm holding, whoops, while I'm holding that together, it takes about 45 seconds for that glue to dry. So you do have a little bit of wiggle room. Just going to make sure um, that this is the right piece. Yep. So then I'm going to go ahead and put glue on the sides that are facing. So on the one side of the petal, on the center again. Again, I want that center to be lower. So the next piece, I'm going to glue it on just a slight bit higher to really give it that added dimension. Okay, so then as you go through, and as I go through, I'm just simply going to be gluing things at different levels just to really give it that look and dimension um, that I want. This is really the beauty of something this handmade because no two will ever be alike, and everyone's going to have a slightly different technique when putting it together to give it that really nice look. So the other thing to note while you are gluing is that there might be some edges where you think, oh, I could have sanded that a little bit lower. So right there you can see what I'll likely do is go back in with my rotary tool and smooth that down. Um, but I want to glue that a little bit more elevated. So that's what I'm going to do here. And really I'm just going to go around and continue that gluing process um, to make it a full floral. Keep in mind when gluing your flower together that this is all about personal preference and what you think looks the best. There's no right or wrong way to do this. On the other side, you could also paint each petal individually if you want to go for that look, and I have seen many people choose to go that route. For me, for detailed flowers like this, I do find it much more efficient to glue it together before completing the painting process. And it should be noted that when you are gluing such small pieces with super glue, you should be very careful to keep your fingers away from the glue, although it is a little bit of a rite of passage to glue your fingers together. So there you have a fully shaped and glued flower. Um, you can see there's a lot of dimension to it. The back of it, um, there is enough surface area to glue down. Um, if you wanted, you could try to sand this smooth so it's all one level, but I did glue the outer petals at the same level as the center. Um, so I'll be able to glue that really securely down. Um, the petals I glue separately because again, I'll lay my floral down. And then when I'm gluing, I'll glue the leaves on the outside, but you can see there's a lot of dimension to it um, since the petals are at different levels. So that is how you shape and glue a floral. And next up, we're going to paint it.